hello. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, like he said, my name is Rain. Um, and I've spent a large percentage of my relatively short life um, talking about sex ed and learning about sex ed. Um, over the past couple years, I've spent weeks and months traveling across Canada and across North America, talking to people my age from around the world about sexual education, um, people from Africa, South America, Asia, talking about what sex ed looks like in those countries, talking about how it affects people, talking about why it's necessary. And in that time, people tend to ask me the same question over and over. They ask me why I care so much. They say that sure, sex ed is important, but it's not life or death. I didn't receive a lot of sex education in school. Um, my teachers didn't use words like penis or vagina. Um, they never really taught me what the word consent meant. But I did get a different kind of sex education the kind that you get from texts from your mom and whispers from friends, the kind that teaches you to never leave your drink alone at a party, to never take the bus home at night, to never walk into an empty elevator. There are some types of sex ed that I taught myself, like when I was 14 and I learned to start carrying an extra sweater in my backpack for when too many men three times my age would look at my chest with hungry eyes. I learned to stop making eye contact on the street. I learned to stop smiling at strangers. I learned to always tell the men that I had a boyfriend. That's the type of sex ed that I got, that I didn't learn in school. And it's the type of sex ed that I had to learn because those men didn't get sex ed in school. So people ask me why it's important, and they say that it's not life or death, but I think that that statement represents a fundamental breakdown of information, a significant misunderstanding about the power of education. Because quite simply, sexual education is the difference between life or death for millions of girls around the world. We live in a world that is decimated by gender-based violence. Um, an estimated 120 million girls around the world have experienced sexual assault at some point. Over 70% of women worldwide have been victim to violence because of their gender. That's not millions, that's billions. And overwhelmingly, this violence is cyclical and it starts young. Boys grow up seeing how their men, how their fathers treat women and they grow up to, per to perpetrate that. Or women grow up experiencing abuse and many never realize that they deserve to be treated differently. Uh, over 50% of women in Canada are unable to define the word consent. And when you don't realize that you have the power to autonomy over your body, it can be almost impossible to enforce it. For me, gender-based violence is especially prevalent when it happens in schools from sexual harassment in the hallways, to inappropriate comments from teachers, to sexual bullying. It's been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And my experiences are not unique. They're depressingly, achingly ubiquitous. And the only way, the best way, to break that cycle is through sustained, quality, universal education. But around the world, in Canada, in the US, especially worldwide, Leaders are refusing to take action on sex education. Despite the advisory of thousands of teachers, educators, mental health professionals, parents, and the pushing of thousands and thousands of students. I know because I hope to lead 100,000 of them. Thank you. <laughs> Our governments are not listening to us. And it begs the question, why? Why even in a country like Canada that prides itself on being like a so-called liberal utopia, why do we still shield our children from the words penis, vagina, and consent? I believe there are a few answers to that question. The first one is simply ignorance. Ignorance about women's bodies, ignorance about gender, ignorance about what these curriculums will be teaching. When things start to change, when the world starts to change, for a lot of people it can feel like it's leaving them behind. 
like it's moving too fast for them to keep up. And that's scary. <laughs> that's terrifying, and I understand. And when you feel scared, people can kind of get the impulse to dig in their heels and try to resist that change so that they don't feel like they don't belong in this society anymore. And that's understandable, but that's something that education can help. When children learn about gender and about sex and about sexuality, parents learn as well. When we change the way that our society and our schools talk about gay marriage and about gender identity and about healthy relationships, we change the way that all of these things are framed in our society. It's a big leap, but we have to take that leap. There is another reason though, one that is a lot more serious and a lot more sad than just ignorance. Um, as the cliche goes, knowledge is power. And when power is given to women and to oppressed minorities, that upsets a power imbalance thousands of years in the making. People in power, politicians, leaders, even just those who hold privilege, they have no worse fear than losing that power. And what could be more threatening to somebody whose power stems from the patriarchy than a generation of women knowing just how much power they have? What could be more threatening to a homophobic politician than a generation of educated children just waiting to vote him out of office? What could threaten an abuser's security more than his victims being able to put words to his crimes? Women's bodies have been policed, sexualized, colonized, and objectified for thousands of years. This physical domination has made way for an intellectual and emotional domination as well. Women have been treated like garbage for so long that a lot of us don't know that there's any other way to be treated. But we can break that cycle with sexual education. Um, the way that women are treated in society stems from the way that we talk about sex, and we need to change the way that we talk about sex. Let's think about some of the messages that women are thrown. We're taught that sex is for men to take and for us to give. We're taught that our only power comes from its repression. We're taught that our only worth comes from our purity, that we are only worthy so much as we are able to keep ourselves pure, but also only so much as we are available to be sexualized by other people. We are never to act, we're only to be acted upon. A lot of women don't even know that we're supposed to enjoy sex, that we're supposed to act on desire and feel pleasure. And these conversations are not just about sex. These are conversations about the role of women in society. Talking about sex means talking about power, means talking about gender. Ignorance is a tool for upholding the global hegemony. Ignorance is the thing that upholds the current balance of power. And the only way to shake up that balance of power is to put information and autonomy and self-determination back in the hands of those who it has been taken from. Information is power. Knowledge is power. And it's time for women, for oppressed minorities, for the LGBTQ community to get that power back through education. I was born in 2001. And in the short time that I've been alive, there has been a fundamental paradigm shift in the way that my generation is interacting with the world, interacting with information, interacting with each other. We're the generation that learned about sex from Pornhub and sexuality from Tumblr. We're the generation with an information superhighway to 500 of our closest friends at all times. We're the generation whose boys are finding their way to 4chan message boards a lot easier than they're finding their way to comprehensive sex education. I know kids who had iPhones before they could tie their shoes. And when you try to teach those kids a curriculum written before Facebook was invented, you might as well have to accept that you're not teaching them anything. Things are changing right now, and they're changing fast. And we have the opportunity to change everything, to change the way that we view uh, the, every aspect of sexuality in our society. We have the power to change that through education. But we have to take that leap. I don't want my daughter 
to grow up in the same world that I did. I don't want her to have to learn to pack a sweater. I don't want her to have to cover her drink up parties. I want her to be able to take the bus home at night. I'm tired of women being punished for the crime of being born into these bodies. I'm tired of it. We teach women for their whole lives a million little ways to protect themselves from the world. But what if we started teaching everybody something else? Thank you. <laughs>